Do you have back pain, a flat butt, and or a weak core? Today's workout can help. It's a 15-minute postpartum back and butt workout to help strengthen your back, glutes, and core to reduce pain, improve function, and increase definition. You'll need a mat and a set of light to medium dumbbells. Let's get started. Hey mamas, welcome to today's workout, the postpartum back and butt workout. We're gonna use a set of light to medium dumbbells. I'm using 10 pounds and we're gonna do first half standing up, second half on the floor. Let's go ahead and grab those weights, preparing for our first movement, a deadlift. So we're gonna start with the feet underneath your hips, dumbbells in each hand, shoulders are back and down, belly button is pulled in toward the spine so the core is engaged. We're gonna hinge from the hips, bringing those weights down so your back is flat and then bringing them all the way up to standing hips under your shoulders. So hinge from your hips, push your butt back, come up, squeeze the glutes, engaging that core and pelvic floor. So as you hinge the hips, make sure your chest is not dropping, your shoulder blades are back and down, so you're keeping that little pinch between the blades and therefore keeping that back engaged, your core is engaged and your chin is tucked in so you've got a nice neutral spine. This move is great for that lower back, but also the glutes and hamstrings, which supports a strong back. Good, you can move as fast as you want to, but I want you to think more about controlling the movement here rather than just pumping out reps and then breathing, of course, to keep that core engaged. Let's rest at the top. We've got 10 seconds to transition to a wide leg deadlift. So we're gonna take the feet wider and turn the toes out slightly. We're gonna do that same movement, but with a wider leg, more hamstring work. We're gonna hinge from the hips, Again, coming down and then stand on up. Let's do that again. So 50 seconds, it's gonna allow us to move slow and controlled and really start to fatigue the muscles, but not too much. And if you need a longer break, you can always take one. Same thing here, that tendency is gonna to be to want to round that upper spine. Be really careful and make sure you're keeping those shoulder blades, again, retracted back and down away from the ears. Good. And we wanna make sure at the top as well, we're not overextending here into the back. We wanna keep the glutes neutral but engaged. So I'll show you what I mean right here rather than here. That's gonna take that pressure, keep it in your glutes, and that's what we wanna focus on strengthening at the top, rest. All right, we're gonna move on to a single leg deadlift. So take one leg, step back. I'm gonna show you two variations, modified and then advanced. So we're gonna start with that beginner variation, hinge from the hip, back comes down flat, stand up. So you're in a little kickstand position. Both feet are down, the front heel is up, and you're hinging. Here's the advanced variation. You're gonna take that back leg off the floor and then place it back down. So either way, you're hinging forward, you're keeping that nice straight back and you're pushing your hips back, keeping everything square to the floor. Long straight spine, arms are straight. And if you're doing that advanced variation, again, that leg, it's gonna add a little balance challenge. That toe is pointed toward the floor. You're leading with that heel. Your back leg does not have to be perfectly straight and you want a little bend in that front knee so you're not locking out the leg. Let's rest here. We're gonna do that same thing, other side. So reset, find that kickstand position. Again, I'll show you the modified or the beginner version first, then we'll go to the advanced if you're ready for it. So focus on that hinge right here, not long straight spine, push back into that glute. And as you stand up, you wanna push through that front heel, that will help you balance. Think all four corners of your foot. So big toe, side of the foot, and the heel are pushing down. Let's add in that leg lift if you can, full single leg deadlift. Might feel easier to balance on one side than the other and that's totally normal. Just take things in stride. If you can't do it on one side, no big deal. Just do the modified variation. You're still getting that glute, hamstring, lower back work, but you are gonna add in a little more intensity with that single leg, full advanced variation. So good for your core. Rest. All right, let's move on to a single leg tap back. So we're gonna go back to that first leg and we're gonna start with the feet under hips. And all we're gonna do is tap, hinge forward and stand up. Hinge forward, stand up. So it's not a lunge. You can see that back leg is straight, 
front leg is bending just a little and we're pushing back into the hips, hinging forward. Do you see that? So it's only about a 45 degree lean into that front leg. We wanna push through the front heel to stand in, step in, and we're engaging that glute here. Woo. And testing, testing our balance, you can see that. So chest stays up. When we tap that foot back, it's light. Toes are light, heavy in that front heel. Might not feel like much at first, but this is a good one if you have lighter weights, you might wanna go heavier on this movement. Let's do one more. Rest. So it's not a lunge. Remember that back leg is straight. We're just tapping and then pressing in. And that way we're gonna focus on that glute alone and keep it gentle on the knees. Let's repeat, other side. This is also one, it would be great if you have stairs at home, put that front foot on a step and add a little more intensity by creating an elevation change. I do have stairs, but I can't film on my staircase, so here we are. So push through that front heel. Again, back leg is straight. Doesn't have to be locked out or anything, but just know that you're just tapping and lifting all that pressure is in the front foot. You don't even have to tap the back foot. You can leave it off the floor if you wanna make it really advanced. Just swing it back and forth. And you can see if you do that, it's just like that single leg dad lift, just a little bit faster, same movements, same muscles working here. So good for core stability, strengthening that back, and of course, our butt. All right, moving to the floor. Set your dumbbells aside. We're gonna bring the feet under, knees under hips, hands under shoulders. We're gonna take the front leg, kick it straight back, bring the knee in, kick it back, bring it in now. I want you to focus on driving through your heel, like you're pushing through a brick wall. Create that resistance in the glute. Now, second thing, pay attention to your technique here. Hands are under your shoulders, knees are under hips, and then your chest and your hips are square to the ground. You're bracing that core as you push back. So you're pulling belly button in towards spine, engaging that deep core pelvic floor powering through that heel to engage the glute. You can go a little bit faster if you're feeling comfortable with the movement, no pressure to. Keep it kicking, we got a couple more and then we're gonna rest right here, rest. All right, let's move to a glute extension. So we're gonna take that leg straight out, hip level or a little lower. We're gonna take it to the corner and then straight back, corner and back. So just the leg is moving, Toe stays pointed toward the floor. Abs are braced and engaged. And you can feel that in the side glute, right? That's where we're targeting here. So toe down so we don't open up the hip. And you're naturally gonna wanna shift into that opposite side. Try to keep those hands evenly pushing to the floor and everything square to the floor, just like in that kickback. Slow and controlled right here. I want you to try to go slower. Don't speed up. Focus on that full range of motion. But it's not a big range, right? You can see it's only about a foot, foot and a half. We don't want to take it all the way to the side and open up that hip. We want to keep everything square. Rest. All right, one more on this side. We're staying on that same side. We're burning everything out. We're going to switch. So last move is a hydrant. And we're going to take it to the elbow and down. Elbow and down. Elbow or tricep, if you can get a little bit higher of tricep area, that's great. So as you're lifting, it's a hydrant lift. So it's not the traditional hydrant. You're aiming to get that knee up a little higher and then placing it all the way back down. So it's almost like a little oblique crunch and then we're getting into that glute. That side glute especially, that hard to target area right here you felt it with that side extension, these hydrant lifts. I know you're starting to fatigue. That opposite hip is feeling it too. We're almost there. Just give me a couple more, but then we got to do the other side. Rest. Okay, push back for a second. Reset everything. If you need a longer break, take it. We're repeating that on the other side, starting with that kickback. So knee in, flex the foot, drive it back. So again, set up that foundation, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, 
square to the floor, leg is kicking back, driving through the heel, hip level or lower. We don't wanna kick too high because that's gonna take that work out of the glute. We wanna keep it in the glute and then it's safely in the low back, allows us to engage that core and protect the spine. Keep driving. Now, just because we're not using a weight or moving fast doesn't mean you can't give me power in that kickback. So push without locking out the leg. Push like you're pushing through, trying to kick down a door or something. I don't know. You're trying to kick your kid's toys out of the way. Couple more here. Oh, rest, there we are. All right, moving to that side extension. And you can feel those shoulders working, right? Lots of pressure there too. All right, leg up, toe down, side and back. Slow and controlled here. If you're going fast on those kickbacks, try to slow down here. Really feel that burn accumulate in that side glute. Pushing evenly through the hands. Love this movement. It's amazing how effective things like this can be, even when you're not going fast, even with no equipment. Couple more. It's a long 50 seconds. Rest. All right. Whew. One more, the hydrant left. So reset everything square to the floor again. And we're gonna move that knee to the elbow and down. So just lift, pull that knee in. Now we're aiming for the elbow or tricep if you can get it there. But if that's too difficult or if you're starting to collapse into that opposite side, reset everything, reduce the range a little bit. your glutes and your core. So important for supporting your back. Everything works together. So we got to strengthen the back, the butt, the core, all as a unit, especially when we're putting so much demand on it during pregnancy and postpartum life. It needs some love. All right, shift back. We're going to come onto our bellies for this last set. It's a prone airplane. So hands wide, palms down. Legs together, toes pointed. We're gonna lift the front leg and the back arm, shifting, looking toward that arm, and then come down opposite side. So looking toward the hand, but keeping your chin tucked. Leg is straight as you lift, squeeze your butt, and then arm is straight. You're trying to get your chest off the floor without craning your neck. So keep that chin tucked. You can use that opposite hand to push out of the floor and lift higher. If you're feeling good, take it higher, take the leg higher. If you want a little more intensity, opposite arm can keep hovering above the floor. Really gentle, good spinal stretch release. All right, we're gonna move on to a prone back extension this time. So legs together again, they can be about hip width apart, but somewhat together, arms straight, thumbs up. We're gonna lift that chest only, pull the elbows back, lift, extend the arms lower down. Let's do that again. So pull elbows back, lift everything off the floor except for that belly button and the legs from the belly button up, let's say that. So we're using those elbows to pull back, open up that chest and getting into that mid upper back, lower back glute squeeze at the top. This one's tough, don't underestimate it. Try to get a little higher off the ground for the last couple. One more, let's do it. Nice. All right, last movement. We're gonna do a bent knee glute hamstring lift. So you're gonna take your hands, lay down on them. You can look toward the floor. Heels together, knees bent, knees wide. We're gonna push up and down, just the legs. Up 
and down. So you're driving through those heels, trying to get your knees and your thighs off the floor. And you're just trying to relax your upper body. It's hard, I know. And just lift the legs. Really great for those glutes and hamstrings to isolate. It's okay if you can't get your knees very high off the floor. That's not even the point here. The point is controlled movement and just using that back body, that posterior chain to do the work. The front of the body gets so tight and tense and we wanna compensate with it, but movements like these force us to use that back body. And we're done. Good work, you guys. Shift back into a child's pose. Release that back just a minute. Take a stretch if you need. Check out one of my postpartum deep stretch workouts to relieve even more of that tension in the low back, glutes, and hips. But I hope you all enjoyed that. If you want more of a challenge, stay for another round and repeat that set again for a little bit of an extra workout. But I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you back here for our next workout together. You may have noticed I've changed up my workout space a little bit. I added in this large exercise mat from Yoga Rilla Workout Mats. I truly love this product and I don't endorse something that I don't love. It's made with premium materials, so I don't have to worry about damaging my hardwood floors. Also, you can see it's quite a bit larger than the standard yoga mat, so it allows for bigger movements and more space. Again, when you're working out with dumbbells, you're doing HIIT. Even with my core exercises, I love it because I don't have to worry about my back hurting as I work out on my hardwood floors, and I don't have to worry about damaging my floors either. I've got a discount code in the link if you're interested for 10% off your purchase. Again, that's Yo Gorilla Exercise Mats. Love these mats. You will not regret it. Honestly, I wish I had gotten one sooner.